third graders. Um, so this week I am going to read you a story. It is by Patricia Polacco. Patricia Polacco writes um, lots of realistic fiction. And remember, that means it's a story that didn't happen, but it could have happened. Um, it's called My Rotten Red-Headed Older Brother. And the reason I like this story is because it reminds me of my own brother. My brother and our mother and I all lived with my grandparents on their farm in Union City, Michigan. Now my babushka, my grandmother, knew lots of things. She knew just how to tell a good story, she knew how to make ordinary things magical, and she knew to ma how to make the best chocolate cake in Michigan. After she told my brother and me a grand tale from the homeland, we'd always ask, Bobby, is that true? And she'd answer, of course it's true, but it may not have happened. And then she laughed. Now, I knew that she loved me all right, but I couldn't quite understand how she could even like my older brother, Richard. He had orange hair that was like wire. He was covered in freckles, and he looked like a weasel with glasses. The one thing that my bubby didn't seem to know was how perfectly awful my brother really was. Mind you, he was always nice whenever she was around us, but as soon as she would leave, he would do something terrible to me, and then he'd laugh. There were so many things that I couldn't stand about my brother Richard. The worst was that he was always telling me he could do just about anything better than I. But I could pick more blackberries than you can, he jeered at me one day. No, you can't. Can so. Can not. Can, he whispered. Not, I said louder. Can, he whispered so low that I could hardly hear him. Not, I screamed back. We both picked berries for most of that afternoon. Well, he up and did it. He not only picked more berries than I, he set a record that wasn't even challenged for the next ten years. You make me sick, Richard Barber, I yelled at him. And he smiled that smile that only a rotten, red-headed older brother could smile. I guess I would have to face it. He could run the fastest, climb the highest, throw the farthest, sit the longest, get the dirtiest, burp the loudest, spit the farthest, he had no equal. Certainly not me. And I'm four years older than you, too. Always have been. Always will be, he sneered. There had to be something, something that I could do that he couldn't. Then an inspired thought comforted me like a fresh breeze on a hot summer day. Oh, Richie, I cooed as he stood next to the rhubarb bushes. Do you like rhubarb? No, he said. It is the sour stuff on the planet. Now I knew at long last that I had him. That I can eat more of this raw rhubarb than you can without getting the puckers, I challenged. I don't think so. I do. I don't, he said, narrowing his eyes. I do, I insisted. Don't, he hissed, looking smug. Do, I said, as I grabbed the first stalk and started chewing it almost down to the leaf. When I couldn't get one more sour bite into my mouth, he was still eating with relish. Thought you said you didn't like rhubarb, I said through pursed lips. I don't like it. I love it, he announced as he popped the last stalk into his mouth. I was so mad I couldn't even feel how my belly was starting to ache. I can't stand you, Richard Barber. A double dog can't stand you, I screamed as I went into the house to be consoled by my grandmother. Yeah, and I'm four years older than you, too, you little twerp. Always have been. Always will be, he said after me. Then he laughed, that rotten, red-headed older brother laugh. That night at dinner, I could hardly eat. Have you been eating angry apples, child? Bubby asked as she sliced me a huge wedge of rhubarb pie. I baked your favorite. Richard gave me one of those extra rotten, weasel-eyed, greeny-toothed grins. At bedtime, my bubby came and sat on the edge of my bed, like she did every night. Look, a falling star, she said. We watched it streak across the sky, and she spit twice between her fingers and gave her chest a loud slap. Why did you do that, Bubby? I asked. I was making a wish. Didn't you know that wishes on falling stars come true? At last I knew how I was going to get back at my brother. For the longest time I watched the dark sky until I saw a star shoot across the night. Then I spit twice between my two fingers and slapped my chest. It was done. My wish was to do something, anything better than my brother, 
I'd show him. Next morning, all I could think about was my wish. I was thinking about it so hard I almost didn't notice the wagons and trucks pulling into the field down the road near Four Corners. A traveling carnival, my brother shouted as he ran toward me. They're setting up right here in our field. But I can eat more hot dogs than you can, he teased. He was already starting it, but this time I was going to do something so incredible that he and he would have to sit up and take notice. I had a star wish. I show my rotten red-headed old, older brother all right. That night I ran straight for the merry-go-round. We must have taken 50 turns on that carousel, but then my brother got off. I stayed on. I went around and around and around. I knew that I could do this longer than you, I shouted at my brother, feeling proud, but just a little bit dizzy. Trisha, I heard my bubby call out. Get off of that thing. It's time to go home. The last thing I remembered was stepping off from the platform. The next thing I knew, I woke up with Bubby sitting on the edge of my bed. Mom and Grandpa were there, too. You gave us quite a fright, Mama said. How do you feel? Uh, what happened? I asked. You fell, my rotten red older brother announced with the biggest grin on his face. I don't know what we would have done, Bubby said softly. Your brother carried you all the way home, and then he went and got Dr. Lee. You had to have stitches. I watched it all, he said excitedly. You fell off the merry-go-round right into some pop bottles, said Gramp. You even passed out, my brother chirped. Looks like you finally did something special. It was from that exact moment that our relationship changed somehow. Uh, thanks, Richie, I said to him. What's the big brother for anyway, he said, blushing. That night... We were all out in the yard. On hot Michigan nights, it was my family's custom to sleep outside where it was cool. Look at those stars, Bubby said quietly. Wishes are funny, aren't they? I said. Sometimes they come true differently than you think they will. That's why you have to be very, very careful what you might wish for. Just may come true, Bubby said. Then she squeezed both of our hands. Hang on to the grasses, she whispered. Why, bub? my brother asked. Because we, if we don't, we might just float up into the stars. Then she leaned over and she kissed us both three times. A kiss for your eyes, and a hold both of your hands and hearts in my good keeping. And this night, I thank God that I walk this earth with both of you. Amen. We all lay on our blankets in the gentle summer night. I'll always be four years older than you, though, my brother whispered softly. Then he smiled. All of us held on to one another's hands, and then we all drifted off to sleep. Trisha Placco writes realistic fiction. Um, but what's different about her stories is they really do mostly come from her life. So what I want you to do at the Google form below is to write about a favorite memory you have with one of your family members or maybe your whole family.